Hi there, this is Nick Storr for Sound on Sound magazine, and we're looking once again at sub-projects in Reaper. Um, I've loaded up an excerpt from a short film music project here. Uh, this is just a small portion of the film, the video track up the top. There's my video preview window up there. Uh, music cues for just three short scenes inside sub-projects in these three tracks below. We're going to have a quick look at how sub-projects can help with a workflow where you're likely to have to make changes to a cue without affecting the other cues further down the timeline. Let's just quickly play through this transition that we're about to change, just so you can get a sense of what we're doing. All right. So film and TV music often require some time signature and tempo manipulation to get the music to hit precisely the right visual points. But if the director, let's say, wants to make a change to the timing of the first music cue, it can be a bit of a challenge under normal circumstances to make those changes without messing everything up in the rest of the timeline. There are some workarounds with you know locking things to time code and then adjusting things and then putting things back to bars and beats. It's it's messy. It certainly gets you out of that creative headspace that you want to be in when you're composing. Um, so all right, in this example, let's say that I've had these three cues approved, but at the last minute the director has given me a new edit and he's added 48 frames to the end of this scene here where we transition from these guys watching the film to the evil nurse in pursuit. So here I've got a new video file loaded up which reflects that editing change and uh, I'll show you how I'd handle it with sub-projects. So um, first thing I'd do is we've got 48 frames so we need to offset all our, uh, all our tracks beyond that point by 48 to the right. Frames to the right, bam. So that was pretty simple. Now what we have is a gap between that crescendo. Let me just play that quickly. Gap. Now the director, let's say for the sake of example, liked the transition, didn't want that big gap in the middle there. And so what we need to do, and as you can see, I put markers in there already. Um, what we need to do is close up that gap so we go into queue number one, which is in the sub-project. And then we'd find that point. Just, just to keep it simple, we'll just sort of lengthen that last section where, uh, where it's just held notes. So from here. So we just want to extend out that crescendo so that it hits uh, hits the, the new cue point, so an extra 48 frames out. Um, I've just inserted a tempo marker here, and I've already gone in and put the, uh, the markers in as to where I want the new crescendo to be. So really all I need to do is I've set a tempo marker. I just lower that tempo until it hits our new crescendo point. We'll play that back. Lovely. Okay. Close the tab. It'll render out my sub project. And we're done. Now I just have to play the scene. Still a bit rough but it does, generally does the job. Now, this was quite a simple change, and if I'd had all of this music in a single timeline, it probably wouldn't have been all that tricky in this specific instance, but I could have literally thrown away Q1 and done something completely different. I could have literally, I could have done anything and would never have risked messing up what I'd already done in Q2, 3, and further on down the timeline because they're safely quarantined in their own sub-projects.